From the 1790s, the UK set the pace in global missions. From its very foundations, the evangelical missions impulse that was birthed in the social reforms and religious enthusiasms of the, of the Clapham community, these reverberated around what was to become the British Commonwealth with a deep desire to make this world a better place, to bring Christianity, civilization, and the benefits of commerce to the benighted masses. Or at least, that's the rhetoric. And we mustn't forget the tremendous good that evangelical Christianity achieved for people adjusting to exposure to a new world in this colonial era, this era that is disappearing rapidly behind us. Kia ora, hello, I'm Jay Martanga from Aotearoa, New Zealand, uh, Director of Missions and Evangelism for the World Evangelical Alliance and Executive Director of the WEA's Mission Commission. I also lead the equivalent of Global Connections here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. We call it down here uh, Missions Interlink, the Alliance of Missions Organisations and Ministries. Well, me and my nation are beneficiaries of notable evangelical missionaries from the United Kingdom, who tempered as best as they could the colonial excesses of the British Empire. And I say that with absolutely no sarcasm or facetiousness. It was far from perfect, but without evangelical missionaries from the UK, my people and our nation would be in a far worse position than we are today. Well, I'm speaking to you all just days before our annual commemoration of the Treaty of Waitangi, which evangelical missionaries from the UK mediated in 1840 and which continues to be the great arbiter of relationships between the British Crown, including all settlers and their children who live here since the treaty, under the Crown's auspices, and iwi Māori, the Māori tribes who originally inhabited and still hold sovereignty over this land and its resources, thanks to the treaty. Well, my experience and reading of the history of evangelical missions from the UK is that the great grace of God upon it could be summed up in the word integral. Now, I know Latin America or leaders, thinkers from Latin America um, have developed a particular articulation of the concept of mission integral, but in truth, it has been a part of UK evangelicalism since its inception, seeking God's best in every sphere of life and society. And sure, it has had culturally bound interpretations of what that best might be, and it can be a, a little unhelpfully moralistic in the imposition of that best, but it has traditionally understood how the work of God should permeate society for society's benefit and for God's glory. And we could contrast this integrated orientation with that of the US, which in general terms focused largely but not exclusively on personal holiness and individual salvation via a prioritization of the proclamation of certain axioms and propositions in the belief that these would ultimately lead to similar ends that UK evangelicalism aspired to more overtly. Well, the entire evangelical missions movement can trace its roots uh, from the UK with its social emphasis, the US with its more dogmatic and pragmatic emphasis in Western Europe with its more of a, of a philosophical and ecclesial emphasis. Only relatively recently have we begun to see alternative missiologies and methods emerge uh, from new sending locales. Well, in light of these emerging missiologies, what might the continuing significance of missions activity from and within the UK um, be? Well, I believe the future is rooted to the past. We Māori have a saying that is translated as, we walk backward into the future. So here are some bullet points that could well be helpful for your consideration as you discern the future of missions from the UK. Number one, keep pursuing and promoting an integrated missiology in practice. We need missionaries from the UK to keep championing this whole of life perspective and missions leaders leading the way in how that works out, especially in a way that also integrates uh, creation care concerns. Two, 
I've perceived a post-colonial humility in UK missionaries' relationships to the other over my 30 years of missions uh, engagement. I guess having learned lessons from the abuses of your colonial past have tempered your perspective in this regard. Three, your social experience in cosmopolitan urban centres at least, has created a heightened sensitivity to the complexities of multiculturalism through both local and global interactions. And sure, it's full of tensions and you're, you're having to wrestle with them and you're learning from them and you're being changed in the process and that's becoming apparent in missions activities. And all of these points, one to three, leads to four an emphasis that I believe you understand on long-term missionary uh, ministry relationships with locals that allows for a high degree of local self-determination in identifying and meeting felt needs. Expat missionaries from the UK can come alongside in supportive but not decision-making roles in this relationship. And personally, I feel this is going to be of critical importance in the multinational, collaborative and indigenously governed future of missions. Well, I hope some of that resonates with you and proves helpful as you discuss the current and future roles of missions agencies and missionaries sent from the UK. And for God's glory in all nations, always and forever. Amen. <laughs>